Hi, everyone. Grab your cup of whatever is in it. Mine is water today. Mm -hmm. You know, your mouth gets really dry when you're speaking. You probably know that. I'm excited for today. And let me just start by saying, if you're new to the show, I have had a career in 25 years of being an expert in image and business etiquette with some books around it. And I'm excited today to have a guest who is an expert in personal branding, and she wrote this big, thick book. I don't know how, Susan, you did it. Susan Critton, we're going to be talking about wise wisdom people and personal branding and how she wrote this big, thick book. Stay tuned. Before we get started, I do want to thank my sponsors. First of all, I always get to wear beautiful clothing and jewelry from Betty Ryder Boutique in Preston Center. You'll know the shop because if you just peruse the shops around, this is the only one with a big red door. Betty Ryder Boutique, thank you so much for your wonderful clothing that you allow me to wear. And I also want to thank Taylor Bags, Stephanie Taylor taylorbags.com. I really do carry these bags, every one of them. She lets me do that. Isn't that terrific? And they're so soft. They're made in Spain. taylorbags.com, reasonably priced, easy to wear wherever you go. I'm going to just put it in front of my books so you can continue to see it. All right. Welcome to our podcast, Doing It Right. This podcast reveals authentic stories from successful leaders doing it right. It's about their journey to become a leader, their choices, motivations, and lessons. In essence, how they built successful personal brands. Your host is Valerie Sokolowski, author of eight leadership books and nationally known as an authority on executive presence and personal branding. Let's get started. Here's Valerie. Susan Critton, welcome to the show. We're going to talk about a lot of things. I've known you for many years because you and I were probably in the very first many years ago class of learning and using the personal brand strategist system. So we're master brand strategists. How about that? Do you remember those days, Susan? And what do you remember? I remember that everyone thought I was crazy. <laughs> so... <laughs> No, in all seriousness, I, I remember going back to a, a company I worked at um, where it was a, a consulting, a career consulting company and wanting to do this with my career clients. And they basically kept saying, Susan, just stay in your lane. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's often a something I've been told throughout my life when I have a new idea. And sadly, you know, the, the world catches up with me and then everyone's like, oh, look at this great thing. It's like, OK, I thought of that five years ago. Um, Anyway, but but real in all seriousness, like I was so excited about it because here's what it did for me. It said finally, I had been saying for many years, why are we not doing more of this kind of work with with employees in their companies? Why do we wait until they've been laid off or in transition to do this work? And what to what for me, personal branding gave the language of what I was already doing with my career clients in a more business language that people could accept. I totally agree with the first part you said, too, in that when I told my colleagues, especially my husband, hey, there's this new thing, came, same story. And um, it only happened because I heard someone talk on it at a speech, just a Chamber of Commerce speech or something ahead of her time. And then I was curious, and you are probably one of the most curious people I know, so tag on that for a minute. But curiosity leads you to many wonderful things. And like you, people said, what is that? And you know uh -huh. what, Susan? Maybe you did this too. I said, <clears throat> I don't know, <clears throat> but I just need to find out. Which goes to something I know you believe in, and that's following your, go your gut or your heart. Uh -huh. You know, uh -huh. Susan, you, you tell me a story, if you have one, please, on this which is when you just have a feeling, maybe it's just a feeling, right? Uh -huh. um, follow it. 
What so would you say I, to that? one of the things that I'm, I'm putting together a presentation for a career conference and it's on turning age into wisdom. And I think this is what you, you and I were looking at. Mm -hmm. And I love this uh, one line, this idea of that wisdom grows in the directions of the questions we ask. And so that is definitely a piece of curiosity. Um, and, and looking at, you know, when I've had a gut feeling, oh my gosh, so many times, I mean, even the other day I was on the news, it was on the news about, I'm in California, how California is short of mental health counselors. And gosh, probably about 20 years ago, I was up fighting the legislator and trying to work with people to try and get more people certified. And that was something I felt very strongly about that it needed to be career counselors and gerontologists and and this was something just the other day, right? And and drug and alcohol counselors. And I I was in battle for that. And it was one of those things that I was way ahead. I could see way ahead that others couldn't see where that shortage may come. So it's probably like, completely different of what you wanted to talk about. No, but that was no, you know what? News. I never know what's going to come out, right? And it's always perfect. Right. How do you know when you're ahead of the team? How do you know when you're seeing things that others don't see, which by the way, reminds me of a movie my husband and I saw last night, Helping Hands. If you haven't seen it, it's the story of uh, Ben Carson and how he had to have, see things that other people didn't see when he uh, worked on the conjoined head of twins and they're living today somewhere in Europe. But all of that to say, being able to see things others don't see. Susan, you do have a gift for that. Where does that come from? You know, I, I think, you know, and this goes a little bit to this topic of wisdom, is that to be wise, you, you learn from your experiences. And people who are wise are often really good at seeing patterns. And I would say one mm -hmm. of the things that I am exceptionally good at is seeing, you know, patterns. And to me, it's a little bit about what you're talking about, which is how do I see things others don't. To me, I'm going, as I look at these patterns, I could see where that may roll out. How do you, um, you know, so, so I always consider myself, you know, a strategist. And for mm -hmm. me, it's being a personal brand strategist of working with people. But really, it's about looking at the patterns, looking at the patterns in the world that we live in, and almost seeing how you can almost fit patterns together. And to me, that's how I see going forward. And again, I think over and over in my life, I have been slightly ahead of the curve. And often people like me um, are seen as like crazy or a little out there or, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. And it's really because I can see what they can't see yet. That's Einstein and a lot of other very <laughs> famous, well-known people. I'm going to read about you in the history books, Susan. <laughs> well, I'm not sure, but... <laughs> You know, talking about books, I want to go back to this for just a minute, and then we'll get back to wisdom, because that's a big topic we'll, we'll delve into. Uh, I want to thank you again for the privilege of editing this book. And took, contributing. And contributing. Yes, yes I was totally honored. I mean, Susan, th this is a really big, thick book, and you wrote it. What was it like to write personal branding for dummies? Personal brand, you know, all the dummy books, those of you who aren't right. uh, watching the show but are listening on audio, she is the author of Personal Branding for Dummies. How did that happen? So I always kind of chuckle because Tom Peters' first article in Fast Company Magazine came out in 1997, and it took 15 years for it to become a dummies book. <laughs> So, to me, that's when it becomes mainstream. That's and funny. It was so interesting because I was actually coming home from a career conference and I had an email and it said, we're interested in talking to you. And it was from the dummies, or, um, I think acquisitions editor or whatever. I'm not uh -huh. sure that, that what level of editor. And she said, we're interested in talking to you about personal branding for dummies. And it, it's so funny. I probably did what many women do. Um, <laughs> is I said, oh, but there are people so much more expert than I am. And, oh, you should talk to so-and-so. And and I said, why are you? And then I finally said, why are you talking to me? Well, actually, first I thought this has got to be a prank. And so on Monday, I called them and no, it was not a prank. And then I started asking questions. And I had never written more than journal articles or um, really that, you know, not, not a book, not anything mm -hmm. of substance like that. 
more than my like academic journal articles. And so they said, well, let us put together an outline and we'll see we're talking to about five people to do this. And I said, well, if you're if you are looking for um, me to be an expert, why don't I put together the outline and get back to you at the end of the week? So that was really smart. Mm. Like looking back, that was a very smart thing to do. Uh, so I put together, I worked really hard all week and I put together a very extensive outline and they said, they took it to their meeting. They go, this is fantastic. We don't even have any changes. And wow. And then I said, goodness, I hope you pick me. I hope you what? I hope you pick me. So I hope you choose me to write the book. And I was scared to death because I had, I'd never written anything. And with a dummies book, they only gave me six months to write that whole thing. Mm. Which is not unusual, by the way, but mm -hmm. not easy. Yeah. So for those who are aspiring writers and wanting publishers, what, what was the most challenging thing of writing a book with a publisher mm -hmm. and fulfilling their requirements while you are the one that's the expert with the content? Um, sometimes I think because I knew nothing about publishing <laughs> that it actually was a, a, a gift because I asked a lot of questions. Yeah. Um, one of the things I hadn't realized, like with a dummies book, for example, they give me, they gave me a dummifier editor for the first, uh, I think three months or no, first three or four chapters. Okay. And then they said, you're on your own. And I said, oh no, I, I have a great relationship with Joan. I, I need her to stay with me. And they're like, no, we don't pay for that. And I said, how about if I pay for Joan? Um, Cause I really think that together I need, she's, she's such a great sounding board. Mm -hmm. So I think because I didn't know, I questioned everything, which I do anyway in life, but I questioned everything and they, um, and here was another one at the end, like really, I, I said, so what's your marketing budget? And they said, oh no, that's really up to you. And I said, well, certainly a dummies book has marketing budget. And they said, yes, but we spread it around among all the authors. I said, well, has anyone else asked? And they said, no. And I said, well, then good, then let's give it to me. <laughs> so. There you go. You know, Susan, uh, I'm just remembering the, the process also that I had to go through. It wasn't that strenuous, but uh, I've got some stats I wanted to read to the audience. These dummy books, your dummy book has sold 27 thousand i'm gonna brag on you is that okay thank you Twenty seven thousand books with the first and second editions it's still on top of the personal branding books on amazon 10 years after the second edition and here's a, some other things to know 77 percent of consumers want to buy from a brand they recognize i.e., of course they wanted to write a book on personal branding because of that statistic of what every person who's in any kind of business needs to know. It is about your brand. Let's stop there for a minute because you have some wisdom, my wisdom guest, on that, the personal brand of someone. Just what is it, Susan? What's personal well, brand? Well, very, very simply, it's about who you are and what you do. How, how do people remember you and who you are and what you do? Mm -hmm. so, so it's very simple in that what personal branding is, that's your personal brand. Personal branding is the strategic process of building a positive set of experiences to be seen the way you wanna be seen. So that's where you, someone like you and I, Valerie, come in as we work with people is how do we first get to know the person so we know what attributes to really look at mm -hmm. and then how do we think about a strategy to help them build that positive set of experiences and you do that better than anybody i know so look her up um, and it's on <laughs> the so banner sweet. by the way susan they'll find you <laughs> let's keep going <laughs> <so> sweet. thank <laughs> you uh the the other thing i was curious about is some of the movie stars or people, famous people, let's just say. Mm -hmm. So I looked this up too. Taylor Swift, everyone is talking about Taylor Swift. Her brand attributes. Do you happen to know 
what some of them are, Susan? Curiosity question. You know, I I not you know like I am this sort of the Taylor Swift generation. Uh, even with my kids, I get they're Taylor Swift fans. But she's you know she has done such a brilliant job. She is genuine. She is people want to be her, mm. um, and she has found a way to really be connecting with people at. A, a, a very authentic level. And so I don't really know her brand. I, I, I probably should have, if you let me think about that one, but those are just the qualities I see for someone who's not really a Swifty. Well, you would think that I'd called you and told you I was going to ask that question because you're absolutely right. Quote, authenticity and consistency because she keeps, she stays authentic to who she is no matter what uh, music genre that she that she entertains yeah. through. Yeah. So you're right, authenticity and consistency. What for what now do you think is the number one brand as far as a company, let's say? Do you know? Mm. I I you know, I don't. Um, you know, certainly Boeing is having a difficult time with their brand mm. right now. If you look at you know, we could also look at negative things that impact a brand, Let's and that, that one is certainly happening for them. Oh. Um, you know, and then that's those are always so much harder to turn back around. I think it's, um, you know, politicians seem to have a stage right now with certain things. I'm going to stay away from that. <laughs> Please um, do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but you know, there are so many things too. I, I work with somebody at Facebook and looking at how they keep trying to uh, keep their brand good, you know, with all the things about disinformation, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think that there are a lot of different brands. It kind of depends on what segment of the market you're looking at right now. So um, sorry, you should have prompted me better on a couple of Oh, no, of no, no, and... I really didn't expect <laughs> you to have the answer. I certainly yeah. did it, but I didn't, but I looked it up. In 2024, Apple is number one ranked most valuable brand. Most yeah, my... valuable brand. There you go, your <laughs> Apple Watch, got it, right? Yeah, and... wait, wait, wait. My Apple oh, well, <laughs> we could go on and on, right? Apple, Apple, Apple. Right. And it outshines Amazon and Google. I thought that was really interesting. Yeah. Okay. You know, I, it's it, it's always an interesting one in my workshops. I'll, I'll put up a group of brands and I always try and think of my audience and I'll, I'll bring up brands that they may know. But certainly during the pandemic, Amazon really elevated its status mm -hmm. because people couldn't go to the store, right? That's right. So in, in some of those different things, same thing with all the online things. I think it's interesting too, even again, um, watching TikTok, like how it's really taken off. And now as they looked at trying to take it away in the, the US market, I thought, well, good luck with that, right? <laughs> like that's pretty interesting because the, the, you know, what are, what did they say? The cows out of the barn, horses out of the barn. You, yeah, you right. should know that you're from Oklahoma. <laughs> right. Well, Branding is a wonderful topic and one we could keep talking on, but I want to go to something um, that we talked at length on, which is your, your wisdom about wisdom. <laughs> so you said, I always ask, as the audience knows, what are your lessons learned in life? And Susan, you said wisdom is having knowledge, experience, and good judgment. Right. You know, so, so, so in looking at that, if you think about it, there are many smart people in the world, really, and they have a lot of knowledge. I, I worked for a stint at UC Berkeley in a, an educational research group and really smart people, but they were not wise mm. because, so here's the, when I say experience, let me elaborate a little on that. It's not just our experiences, but I think it's the relational experiences, the experiences where you've interacted with other people, you've learned from them, you've seen where things have gone right, where things have gone wrong. And then the good judgment comes in of how do you marry both the knowledge, mm -hmm. what you know, mm -hmm. with those relational experiences. And the good judgment to me comes in with how do you learn those lessons from your life and incorporate those into making better decisions to make life better as you go on. So a person, when I was looking at turning age into wisdom, it was um, 
you, you know, we can't help age, right? We all, we all get older like mm-hmm. that. Every single person on, you know, on earth gets older, but, but there are many people who get older and don't get wiser. Um, so it, it's not, they do not partner with each other because if you don't learn from your life lessons, learn from the people that you meet, then you, um, you don't necessarily get wiser. Well said. And actually, I'll, let me uh, move into that a little bit more because you also said as a, as a takeaway that we should use what we learned in, use what you've learned in life and use it to live a better one. So talk about that, how to age well. And from the lessons you've learned, some people can get on the negative side of right. aging and some people right. as you say live a better life because of it what would you so say so there's a great quote that i found that goes to this subject it's by william james and it says the art of being wise is the art of knowing what to overlook oh i love that say it again the art of being wise is the art of knowing what to overlook william mm. james mm. beautiful so to your point i see um a lot of, of older people who just get bitter. So they have not learned from their lessons. They have taken everything negative and it's almost like it's infused in who they are mm-hmm. and they just become bitter. And to me, wisdom says, okay, I went through this and, and often, to, I'm gonna sidebar here for a second. Often we look at some of the wisest people are the people who've had sometimes the most difficult life. And, and through that, they have become kinder, more compassionate, more altruistic, and um, they can see into a human soul in a way that maybe allows them to, as William James says, overlook things. Mm. That's very wise, (laughs) very (laughs) wise. So Susan, (laughs) how do we, any of us at any age, how do we cultivate wisdom? I think that the number one way we start is that you learn from your mistakes. Mm. I mean, the very first thing you do is you learn from, and, and it actually goes into a little bit of positive psychology because the idea is that if you learn from your mistakes, um, that is a growth mindset, right? There's a lot of talk about mindset right now and growth mindset and, um, I actually have a certificate in applied positive psychology. So I like to bring that in as well. But it's about learning from your experiences, good and bad. Um, It is a growth mindset of believing that you can change, right? And that also optimists tend to be better at that. So so is optimism a gift or can people become optimistic? Um, I do think, you know, again, this is just my opinion. I do think we kind of lean one way or the other as a, in general, but I think you can learn to be optimistic. So for example, I have a client right now who um, we had done the values in action uh, character uh, assessment, and it, it looks at value, your values in action. And her lowest was gratitude. And so she every day has to write down one thing she's grateful for. And I'm trying to, will I turn her into an optimist? Maybe not. I mean, she's had a pretty rough life, um, but I can get her where she feels grateful for what she has, like one mm-hmm. thing a day. Isn't that interesting? Isn't mm-hmm. that interesting? Whereas I think, you know, I and I know you well enough to know we are both optimistic people. Both of us tend to be, look at the, um, the more positive side of life and that things will get better, you mm-hmm. know, so there is that trait in, in both of us. Mm-hmm. Um, and some people, I know my dad certainly didn't have that. <laughs> oh. um, but I do think that is part of wisdom is not necessarily being an optimist, but being able to rise above and learn from experience. You know, thank you for that. I want to ask another question deep on it. Mm-hmm. And that is those of us who have experienced some deep mm-hmm. things mm-hmm. and are still smiling. I know you have, and I have. Mm-hmm. Let's just ask you, how did you rise above? 
um, because I didn't want to be who I'd become if I didn't. Oh, that's great. Well, that's very wise, Susan. Well, and right? it's very. And, I mean, that would just be uh, an unhappy life. Uh huh. Um, and really, I couldn't be who I am innately if I stayed there. So I think, I think the other piece of wisdom, which is not, you know, just this again off the top of my head, I feel like it's people who allow themselves to grieve. Mm. It's it is uh, it de definitely requires self reflection. Mm -hmm. I don't think you can become wise by just going, oh well, like right. you know that that's that's different. Mm -hmm. And neither of us did that. It, it is that place of deep grief, self-reflection, looking at who we want to be through that. What have I learned because of that? Also, mm -hmm. what do I never want to do again, right? Mm -hmm. So there are those places where I definitely have the not going there again. <laughs> Learn from your mistakes. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Well, and that leads to another takeaway that you shared, which is uh, about the non-negotiables when you said, consider what's non-negotiable in your life. And um, how would you end that? We were talking about personal branding, but let's let's reframe that. Consider what's non-negotiable in your life and... Okay, so to me, you're, here's the other thing people don't understand often about personal branding is that it is always evolving and it should always evolve because you as a person shouldn't be stagnant your whole life, right? right. So it, it doesn't mean you become something different, but what I do when I work with someone is I go to the core of who that person is. So when I think about the non-negotiables, those may change over time, but but here are a couple that I have that, that I, I've been thinking about is, one is to really look at what are your core attributes. Um, these are those core pieces of who you are that have kind of been with you your whole life. Like those are, you know, like I've always been an idea person. That would be a core attribute of me. You're looking at the strengths. Um, I love using the Gallup Strengths Finder, the Clifton 34. Um, I think those, again, are the core of who you are. So that becomes a non-negotiable. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a, a strategic person. I um, love to start things, get things going. Like I've always been like that. And so to me, that's a non-negotiable. If someone said, you know, that the idea of, and I mentioned this earlier, of Susan, stay in your lane, that crossed a line for me because I never stay in my lane, mm. <laughs> right? I'm always looking to expand on that. Other pieces of it, it could be, you know, what are your geographic concerns? Do you have family you don't want to leave? Or do you want to start a new life? What are the roles you play? Um, what are things that you won't compromise on? Those are, I think, you know, part of wisdom is learning what to let go of, but also knowing what this is so core to who I am, I'm not going to compromise that. I could go on and on, but let me just stop at that. Mm. Well, it's all wise and it's all wisdom and it all comes from your heart. I know that. Uh, mm -hmm. If people want to get in touch with you, there is a banner underneath it. And what does it say, Susan? So it's, I think, the easiest, Susan, SusanCritton.com, Susan at SusanCritton.com. That's awesome. Yes. Yeah. So audience, <laughs> let me just say something. This is really important. Hear me. Listen, mm -hmm. if you're liking this episode, if you're appreciating the podcast, vlogcasts, I call them for video, doing it right, it means everything if you will if you haven't subscribed to the podcast okay. if you would do that by simply hitting the red button you don't have to watch if or listen if you don't want to but at least you'll get reminders and if it's an episode like this one that's so good you can't wait to share it with others please share it with others hit the share button and the third thing is comment when you're watching the show, there's notes under it. You'll see that. And we want to hear from you. How do mm. I know if I'm bringing fabulous guests that resonate with you? How do I know if you have someone that you think would be perfect to be featured on doing it right? Because they are, in fact, doing it right. I don't know. And I want to know. I'm curious and I really care. So you let me know either Email me, it's easy, my name, Valerie at ValerieAndCompany.com or put in the comments something and I always watch them and I always reply. I promise that. 
Well, I tell you what, Susan, you uh, is there something that you were going to have as a giveaway to the guests should they want it? Um, I have, you know, the first chapter of my book, if, if that's something. Um, and I could certainly put together either, you know, like a little bit of the non-negotiables of your personal brand. I have a, a worksheet on that. But I think, you know, just the first chapter of my book, which is an overview. Here's a little tip on any dummies book is that the first chapter is always an overview of the entire book. So it's a little snippet of everything in the book. Um, and I do have a question that I think would be an interesting one to leave people with, okay. which is, and this is, I've been a little bit involved with this group called the Modern Elder Academy with Chip Conley. And so he has a question that I've modified. And, and my modified question is, five years from now, what would you regret not having done? As you think about your own wisdom, what are things in your life you keep putting off, putting off, like... In your own sense of wisdom and growth, what would you regret five years from now if you hadn't started it? That's a great one. Let us know. Put it in the comments or send an email to Valerie at ValerieAndCompany.com. Susan, it's been a joy. Thank you so much for being with us. And I know you're going to get some audience participation with this. And I just wish you continued successes because you deserve it. Oh, thank you, Valerie. You're always so kind and lovely. Thank you. I appreciate it. Good to be with you. And stay with you with me for a minute because I always have a Valerieism. And uh, this one I got from a site called Patrick, the man's name, at patrickinspires.com. Patrick at patrickinspires.com. And he said, within every single moment in your life lies the power to take a step in a new direction. And I'll add, and it's never too late. Let me say it again. Within every single moment in your life lies the power to take a step in a new direction. And I added, and it's never too late. So listen up, folks. If you've enjoyed this, please subscribe. Tell others to share. And that's it for today. Until next time, stay authentic. Bye for now. Thanks for listening. To receive Valerie's voice, free monthly leadership tips, and to learn more about her leadership programs and coaching, visit her website, ValerieAndCompany.com. Next week, we'll be here again to inspire, engage, and equip you with teachable points of view from successful leaders who have been doing it right. Until then, lead authentically.